it's so early in the morning. Hello, hi. I know I look kind of rough right now, but it is 7.30 in the morning. Oh, that is reflecting right on my eyes. You can't see, you can't see my eyes at all. Can I do this? It's kind of like that, that makeover scene in every early 2000s movie, but it, the result is frankly very disappointing. I thought it might be fun since I am very close to hitting 10,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, it is my partner's birthday coming up very soon and I'm gonna be making him a birthday cake today. That might be fun to do a little baking video with y'all. It will not be a tutorial. It will just be whatever comes to my head. Uh, I just felt like it might be a good opportunity to talk to y'all, especially because I feel like um, when I first started my channel, the five people who were subscribed to me like knew me in real life and knew about the things I did outside of this channel. And I would assume that most of y'all don't know me in real life, so it might be a good op opportunity to learn some, some useless information about my personal life. But anyways, what are we making? Okay, so we are going to be making a vegan funfetti cake and I have this like style of baking where I, one, never save the recipes that I use, so it's always just a fun little experiment whether the recipes will work. And it's also an experiment because two, I tend to make substitutions in basically every recipe that I see because I think that I can do better even though I frankly cannot. I will be linking the recipe that I will be using down below. The recipe calls for flour and cornstarch, but I'm just gonna use cake flour because the queen herself, Claire Soffitz, uses cake flour. And I'm also going to be using actual vanilla bean instead of vanilla extract, We're not necessary. I'm just doing this because I love my partner and blah, he deserves the, the good vanilla bean, but not necessary. And I'm also adding a little bit of almond extract in there as well. I also normally like weigh my ingredients because it's like more precise, but my food scale battery is very dead. So this is gonna be a fun little approximation. We shall see, we shall see how it turns out. All right, step one. We are preheating our oven. Ooh, I feel like the queen Sandra herself. And I feel like I'm probably emulating the same level of chaos um, that she brings to the kitchen with maybe less vodka. It is 7.30 in the morning, so we'll see on that front. Yeah, I'm already seeing problems with the way this recipe orders things. Like it wants me to mix all the dry ingredients and then just dump all the wet ingredients on top of the dry ingredients before you mix it, which based on like the very small information I feel like I know about baking does not seem correct to me. So we're, we're going very much off book. And if that ends up being a choice I live to regret, well, you know. Also, sorry to this recipe author. I feel like I just opened up real hot with my critiques of their recipe, but I have not actually done it yet. So I, I really need to shut my mouth because I don't, what do I know? Oh, it's pretty heated. Okay, cool. All right, I realize you guys can't actually see me mixing these ingredients down here. I promise you're not missing much. It's just a bunch of um, various white powders all coming together like one happy family. Anyways, how have y'all been doing? I've been doing pretty good. Just finished law school, which means I'm done. I'm licensed to practice law. Um, that's actually all, all you need. Yeah, I'm kidding. Um, for those who don't know, uh, you have to take the bar exam traditionally in July after you finish law school. And that's when they test you on every topic you've ever learned in law school, plus some topics you didn't learn, at least in my case. Unlike every law school exam you have, it is entirely closed book. What that means is typically when I take a law school exam, I'm able to look at, oh, Goose is drinking water. Typically when I take a law school exam, I'm able to look through my notes from the semester, I'm able to look at the rules, the laws themselves, and I'm able to look at the textbook that we're given because like no one expects you in real life to blindly memorize, like for example, all of the rules of evidence because it's just frankly not necessary. Um, but the bar exam has not cut up on that. So you kind of have to relearn everything you learned in like a totally different context and it's very stressful and I'm not looking forward to it. And so motivation is very low, but I like, I have to do it. Don't really have a choice on that one. It's not really a matter I can protest. So that'll be fun. And it does unfortunately mean that I'm probably going to be slowing down on uploads over the summer, just because like, even though I wish sometimes that I had the kind of channel where I could just like pump out like 10 minutes of my thoughts on some random thing, like every couple of days, that's just not really how my brain works and not really 
the content I want to make. I don't think it's the content you want to see either. Using almond milk. Yeah, I'm not an almond milk girl. Um, definitely more of an oat milk type of gal. I actually make my own oat milk most of the time. But I introduced my boyfriend to almond milk when we first started dating. And he has just never been able to get off the stuff. He just, he loves it. And who am I to take away what he loves, you know? So since I'm using vanilla bean, does that make it a dry ingredient? It's not like the extract? Frankly, I do not know. Okay. Oh God. I swear I'm strong. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to boil some water to see if I can't sort of melt the seal on that. We're just going to move on. All right. Almond extract. Okay. That was a success. That was easy. All right. Half a teaspoon of this shoop a boop And then a whole lot of canola oil. I might not have enough canola oil. Eh. Does this look like three quarters of a cup in here? Maybe. We'll see. All right. Stay in mixer time. Stay in mixer time. about the stand mixer I always wanted one and I was always like I don't want just any stand mixer okay I want like the name brand kitchen aid shit but if you don't know kitchen aids are ridiculously expensive and so I was always sort of looking on Facebook marketplace and they were like a bunch second hand but I just like never made the leap to do it but as luck would have it oh I shouldn't shouldn't say it like that um it would just so happen <laughs> When my partner's grandfather um, passed away recently, he lived a very long life, very happy long life. Um, he just so happened to have a, a KitchenAid that he had not used. And so his loss was my reward. Reward. Oh my God. Okay, I need to stop talking. Anyways, I got a free KitchenAid. That's what I'm trying to say. So, jealous? I'm gonna whip up these wet ingredients here, even though it says to do dry first. It just doesn't seem right to me. Ooh, okay. I was able to boil some water and sort of melt the seal on this. They got little, little expensive little boys we can put in here. Perfect. Oh, that is like just the perfect amount. Oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, in you go. You know what? I will put the vanilla bean in with it because I'm just so excited to use the vanilla. Where did I put it? Oh God, it's very expensive. Where did I put it down? I put the first one down somewhere and I don't remember, but luckily there's two in here. So I will use that one. It's too early for my ADHD medication, so like, who knows, who knows? All right, I know how to use vanilla bean, right? I open it up, and there's a little black stuff in there that you just throw it in, and it tastes really good. First off, it's don't look, okay? I'm sure this is not how it's meant to be done, but it's how I'm doing it, and you know. Yeah, that's a little black specs. That's gonna mean it looks fancy. You're supposed to point the knife towards your fingers, right? That's that's the safe way to do it. Um, it's the way I'm doing it. I don't know how much your how much of vanilla bean translates to actual extract. So I'm just gonna keep going. The more the merrier. And don't don't fret my my fellow eco anxious people. I am not wasting these vanilla beans. Claire Soffitz uh, at one point told me I can make my own vanilla extract. And I did that. So I'm just gonna add that. And then we'll enhance the flavor flav um, for my next recipe. Isn't that beautiful? I'm a chef. All right, let's whip it up. And now I'm going to slowly incorporate dry ingredients. Again, I'm totally ignoring the recipe's instructions, so sorry if this isn't what I meant to do, but it's what I'm doing. Because you don't want to over mix. I know that. Something with gluten makes it taste not good when you mix it too much. I know science. Can y'all see Goose sitting in this corner? Thinks he's gonna get some. I did once eat an entire sheet cake um, that I had thrown away because I messed up the recipe because I ignored all the instructions. What do you What do you think? And he loved it. So maybe I shouldn't be so hard on myself because you're not getting this cake, okay? This is gonna be successful. I know you doubt it, we all doubt it, but it's gonna happen. 
Now I'm manifesting that. Well, it's like runny. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more cake flour because I didn't have, like I said, my food scale was off, so it's possible my scooping was not correct. Um, so let's just go even more inaccurate. Eyeball it. Okay, okay. I've got more of a cake batter consistency, so I think we're doing okay. Funfetti cake. Obviously, we need Funfetti sprinkles. Get that. Okay, so I got Funfetti frosting, which if you don't know, well, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it taste-wise. Pretty much all, I think, of the Pillsbury, like store-bought frosting is vegan dairy-free, if that's important to you. It has a lot of chemicals in it, but it turns out chemicals are a good dairy substitute, I suppose. Yeah, we're not gonna measure this. We're just gonna go off vibes decide how much sprinkles are enough. Oh, that's so cute. The Funfetti pack came with like really cute pastels, but like I do not have that luxury. The ones I'm gonna add, so I feel like it's gonna get less cute. We'll see. Cause you don't wanna add too much cause then it'll sink to the bottom and then Mary Berry will be very disappointed in all of us. I'm gonna try my best. Get the correct ratio. L plus ratio. I don't even, I don't even know what that means. I just hear Dan say it sometimes when he plays League of Legends. I saw this fun blue sparkle crystal sprinkles, which might be kind of fun because my vision for this cake is making it Sonic the Hedgehog themed. And so I feel like a little extra blue is like warranted, right? I'm gonna put some of these, they're not sprinkles, they're like sugar crystals. I'm gonna put some of that in there. I'm put these in the baking sheets, which I, baking sheets, baking pans, trays, molds, cake molds. Um, that I did not prepare ahead of time like the instructions told me to. So I'm gonna do that now. Hopefully these are sufficiently prepped so that they will not stick. Oh, there's a goose hair in there. Yum. So goose hair in literally everything I eat, I swear. Also, goose is my dog. I feel like I um, don't always say that. Goose is my dog. He's that guy over there. He's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. This looks like unicorn vomit. I love it. It's like none of the sprinkles want to put the fun and fun fetty, you know, they keep sticking to the side of the bowl, which is not what I wanted. But I am getting lots of stuff on the floor, which Goose is very excited about. So good for Goose. I will show you final shots before they go into the oven since you all literally saw none of that process before. All right, isn't this beautiful? These are the two cakes right before they got in the oven. As you can see, they've kind of got this blue aura going about it from the sugar crystals. All right, we've really got like a, a Dutch angle going on here, but I wanted y'all to be able to see what happened. So here's what you missed on Glee. Um, took the cakes out. They came out of their molds, thank God. And they've been cooling. And so now I am going to frost them and I'm gonna put some simple syrup um, in between the layers, just because I'm gonna have to put this in the fridge for a little bit and I don't want it to dry out. There's another pro baking tip for you. I'm clearly an expert. Moisturize me. Remember that. Remember her. Never forget her. But yeah, again, um, I said at the beginning, but I think by the time I'm uploading this video, I will hit 10,000 subscribers, which is crazy. I literally have in my bullet journal, like my goals for the year for when I was starting my YouTube channel. And my goals were just to hit like the threshold to get monetized, which I think is like a hundred subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And like, that was my goal for the year. Um, so clearly I did not expect it to take off the way that it did. And like, even if it hadn't, honestly, it's been so fun just to have like something creative and something that like I can enjoy doing outside of my job because you know like hobbies are important for the old the old mental health but you know I'm about to turn 24 at the end of June and so I've really like grown up with YouTube like I remember in 2006 2007 when it was it was just like the place for cat videos and that's all it was and so I remember being like 12 or 13 and I moved to Germany and I was homeschooled for six months before I started school in Germany. And so I was in a foreign country with basically no way to make friends, um, doing school entirely online, not unlike um, what a lot of us experienced in the past couple of years. 
And so like during that time, I really depended on YouTube. Like it sounds sad to say, I depended on YouTube for my like socialization, like channels like Smosh, Philip DeFranco, um, I Justine, of course, Jenna, were really like the foundations of, of me being like a chronically online person. Um, and I'm, oh, I've always been sort of grateful for that. And it's cool to be able to contribute that um, myself, even though I'm not saying that you all are, are super lonely and don't have lives outside of YouTube. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. In a weird way, it, it feels like I, um, I'm returning a favor from my childhood, if that makes sense. Or if that sounds incredibly narcissistic, I immediately take it back. And it's also cool because like, like don't get me wrong, I have friends in real life who I, I love and adore very much, but a lot of them just are not invested in internet culture the way that I am. Like I remember there was one night where I had to explain to two of my friends from law school who Trisha Paytas and David Dobrik were, and that was like a two hour conversation. I don't know if they actually wanted to hear, if they were just being polite, but they, they heard it. And so it's nice to have like this community of people who have like so many of my shared interests because like I am not a rare snowflake. I feel like a lot of the stuff I've um, talked about on my channel are things that have been like heavy sources of discussion on the internet, but you know what the world needs my opinion on these things. Um, and so like, it's been cool to see that people are, are so receptive to that and, um, you know, are able to give me new perspectives on things. Cause I've also learned a lot from like you guys when you leave comments, um, because believe it or not, not everything I say on this channel is correct or the most well articulated thought that anyone's ever had. Um, and so, you know, I feel like I get to like learn and grow alongside everyone while getting to do something like that's just really creative and genuinely like just for the enjoyment of doing it. So I am very grateful for that. All right, that's that's enough. <laughs> that's enough emotional bonding, enough emotional vulnerability for me. Um, so let's get back to frosting this dummy thick cake. Yeah, so my goal is I'm going to frost it and then I'm going to be putting fondant on it later to really level up this Sonic cake, make it look, oh, what's a word that Sonic would use? Real red, Blech. And I had originally planned on making cocktails to go with this drink, go with this drink, go with this cake. Um, I bought blue Curacao so I could make a fun little Sonic drink. But unfortunately I fainted yesterday. And so I had to drink all the Sprite that I was gonna use for that cocktail. So sorry, Dan, um, no cocktails for us. I will try not to faint again in the future, but the American medical system has not been particularly helpful at combating that. So, you know, no promises. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna finish doing this and I will check in with y'all again um, when I'm on to the next step. Ooh. All right, the lighting is getting progressively worse as time goes on. So the cake, and I have been- Goose, do not lick the fridge. Okay, thank you. Like I was saying, the cake and I have been chilling. Pre-rolled some fondant that we're gonna use to decorate the cake. I have not done this in a very long time, so we shall see how this goes. If you're wondering why I'm insisting on making a Sonic cake for my soon-to-be 24-year-old partner, um, there is actually a reason behind it. So actually, in February of 2020, Dan and I saw Sonic the Hedgehog 1 in theaters, and we had a great old time. And um, little did we know that that would be the last time that I would be in the theater for a very long time, and Dan as well. And so recently we went and saw Sonic the Hedgehog 2. <laughs> Fantastic, good stuff. And that was my first time back at the movie theaters since Sonic the Hedgehog. So I feel like Sonic has just played an important role in my life these past couple of years, as I hope he has for many of you as well. Um, Dan saw Batman before he saw Sonic 2, so it wasn't quite the emotional experience for him. But nevertheless, we, we love that little blue guy. So this is for him. I've also always really liked that one like Stranger Danger PSA that Sonic did. And I quote that quite frequently. Kids, there's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. So um, even though I've never actually played a Sonic game, 
Um, I feel like him and I are connected in some sort of way. Moving around at the speed of sound. This is not enough fondant. Go on the top, dude. I hate fondant because I'm putting in all this work and it's not even going to taste that good. Hot take for those of you out there who watch a lot of cooking shows growing up. Uh, Cake Boss never really did it for me. I didn't really like the anger in that show. And also, people seem to forget that there was another show where they made beautiful cake displays called Ace of Cakes. And I think Ace of Cakes made way prettier stuff with fondant, honestly. And I'm not just saying that because it takes place in Baltimore, where I'm from, and the owner and I went to the same college, hashtag true grit. They really gave gave it their all, and I don't think they get the recognition that, that Cake Boss did, and I don't think that's fair. All right, now that every, all the Cake Boss stands have unsubscribed. You know, what I love about Dan is that he does not have the highest standards <laughs> um, when it comes to food. So, you know, even if it's ugly, he will still love it. <laughs> And he won't roast me too hard if it looks stupid. All right, don't you just want to run around this beautiful suit? <laughs> Next, we're going to do what's going to be much more challenging for my little hamster brain <laughs> is we're going to try and do a checkerboard design. So I've got two different colors of fondant ready to roll. And I've got a little glass tile from a disco ball <laughs> that I'm going to use as the measurement to cut out the checkerboards, as one does. Yeah, I'm not doing a good job of filming this, sorry. Just imagine how disastrous this <laughs> looks down here. Uh, honestly, y'all don't need to see you too close. I think it's for the best that you can't see what's happening down here. Maybe it's because I don't have any Rice Krispie treats in this cake. I think that's gonna affect the structural integrity. Oh, why did I eat the fondant? I don't like the taste of fondant. Can you believe it took until last year for me to get diagnosed with ADHD because I feel like I am just like a textbook right now. Beautiful, beautiful squares. And we're not gonna cut on a cutting board. We're just gonna cut directly onto my table. I'm sure Dan will love that, but what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Oh, okay. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> is that good? Is that the square? No, it is not. Okay. Actually, you know what? I could save myself a lot of time and just wrap this around and then put squares of the other tile on. Mmm. This is definitely gonna be the back of the cake because no one needs to see this. It's like a mullet that no one asked for. Oh no. Oh no. Poor Dan. He doesn't deserve this. I just watched um, BNA, it's an anime series on Netflix. And it was so good, but it only had one season, but I have the ending theme song stuck in my head currently, which is a little unfortunate because I do not know the words. They're in Japanese. It's like... And there's like a little gay fox and um, Tom Nook fall in love. And there's like a angry furry man and it's like Zootopia and Bee Stars, but with like a weird anti-vax sentiment at the end. But it's good, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, the lighting's really weird right now, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that because I can't really move where my kitchen is in relation to the sun. So um, it's kind of how it is sometimes. What do you think, Goose? Will this get me a proposal? I cut to me on the second season of The Ultimatum being like, you know, we have the perfect relationship, but he just didn't appreciate this beautiful cake I made for him. I think I've got reality show potential if someone would just give me a chance. I don't think I'd do well on Survivor because I frankly don't do well on starvation diets. It's not really my thing. But I've also heard that they've like started having Applebee's catering for the contestants these days. I also know I would do terrible on The Amazing Race because nothing stresses me out more than travel. But I mean, I have lived abroad, so I feel like I have that sort of advantage. Like I know how to get around Europe for sure. If any of you see me when I go to Europe this summer, lost and stressed, you say nothing, okay? I'm an expert. I did send an audition tape for The Circle, um, but I did not hear back. And unfortunately, because I'm in a loving relationship, I feel like I kind of get cut out from like all the classics, you know? I would love to go on The Bachelor, Bachelorette, and just kind of fuck around for a couple of weeks, but alas, I have a loving partner already. Um, I could just pretend that I don't and then <laughs> pull a jet at the end, but I don't know, it might be a little hard. 
all things considered, especially since I'm publicizing this plan to y'all right now. Might be revealing my hand a little bit. If any circle producers are watching, hit me up. I am available. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking about this, honestly, right now, but um, what can I say? Making a Sonic cake just brings out something in me. I don't know if it's good or bad. All right, next I am making the little Sonic rings because we kind of, the guy's got a lot of rings and yet he is a single man. What is up with that? Even Amy can't tie that little hedgehog down, I guess. Maybe Amy should go on season two of The Ultimatum. I'd watch that. How much anxiety did that just give you? <laughs> Almost done. I'm going to clean this up and I have like a little fancy cake chopper it's gonna go on and some extra little decor bits. This is the finished product. Um, ignore that, ignore that part. Um, yeah, she's looking a little rough. Um, I know you probably had really high hopes when I sounded like I knew what I was doing at the beginning, but you know, it is the love that counts. Um, and I was able to find some like secondhand Sonic decor. I cleaned the table, so it's wet over there, cute. So I spruce it up, we got this over here. One of our neighbors has like young children, so I'm probably gonna be able to pass this along to them if they're interested, because I don't really like to use like disposable stuff like this, if I can avoid it. <laughs> it's gonna taste good. It's gonna taste good, okay? I see you all doubting me right now. Oh my God, look, I have like fun in my hair. Okay, I'm really sweaty. I'm gonna shower now. Thank you for coming along with this journey. I hope this was fun. I know this isn't really what I put on my channel normally, but it was nice just being able to talk to y'all non-scripted and just see what comes out of my head because sometimes it's entertaining. <laughs> sometimes it's really not. So I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did enjoy it, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.